Columbus is a growing city with a growing cultural scene. And as we know, the art scene is crucial to the city's economic development because it serves as one of the major influences that residents and businesses look for before settling in an area. Professional dancers, musicians, and theatrical companies from all over the country come to Columbus to perform. But as exciting as that is, we have a community of local artists who in their free time and no pay, passionately put on live theatrical productions and enrich our community's art scene. We're gonna take a look at three local theatrical groups and their quest to bring theater to our community on today's heart of the city, all the world's a stage. Uh, live theater attracts you, brings you in, draws you in. Each and every time you see uh, a show or hear some music, when it's live, it's a little different. And so you feel more part of it, you feel more connected to it. Uh, you see the human up there doing their thing, uh, to, to connect with you uh, specifically. And that's something that uh, the, only the best uh, can come across on, on the silver screen, but it definitely happens when you go to a, a live recording or a live theater uh, show. Actors Theater of Columbus celebrates the possibilities of classic theater and literature, educating the community with literacy and artistic vision. The thing that I love most about Actors Theater is that because we perform for free in a public space, we have a very different relationship with the audience than really not just any other theater company, but almost any arts organization. Most arts organizations, you need to go into a special place. You need to pay money to go inside. Whereas we get to interact with people who are here just because they were in the park and became excited by what they saw happening on the stage. Uh, we get to form these communities every night of anywhere from two or three hundred to twelve hundred people who are picnicking together on the lawn, um, just enjoying what it means to be captivated by storytelling together. Um, it's something kind of magic. You can't do that really any other place. Founded in 1982 by Gary and Patricia Elson, Performing Shakespeare Productions in Schiller Park has kept its tradition for over 35 years. So um, our first show was A Midsummer Night's Dream, and it was in June, I think. Yeah, June. And we um, didn't have everything that the company has now, so we got in costume and makeup at um, Pat and Gary's house, which was on Reinhardt, right across the street from the park. And then we trooped across the park in full, you know, fairy costumes and everything. And uh, everybody was asking us what was going on. So that's how we got like an audience to begin with. And then, uh, oh, we had to take down the set every night too. Where'd we store it first year? In a garage? Yeah. Or, yeah. Red Bud Alley. Red Bud Alley. For the Alley. first couple of years. We For the first couple of years. Garage. Took it down every night. Put it back up the All next night. All year. All the staging, all everything. And we borrowed your sound equipment. <laughs> That's how I got it started. Vicky, uh, Vicky made me give them their sound, my <laughs> extra sound equipment that I had from being a musician, and here I am. Uh, it's not just the actors and uh, the musicians, but it's all the folks behind the scenes, the stagehands, uh, folks who really are part of a thriving uh, industry uh, folks uh, working uh, to really make sure that we all get to have a good time when we go out to uh, the theater. Well, I also build the sets, and so we definitely get people wandering up and being like, what are you doing? Like, well, I'm building. And then we get to kind of talk to people about that, and that's, uh, I mean, it has its pros and cons, because if, you're, if I'm building, I need to be working. But ultimately, like, they're the people I'm here to serve, so it's pretty cool to have that. You know, a lot of times outdoor theaters have uh, a natural amphitheater on the back, you know, like it's at the bottom of a hill. And we, we have that to a certain extent, but there's not really a lot to bounce sound back from. So when it comes to supporting your voice and diction, that's, that, I think that's more challenging mm -hmm. in the park. Um, and everything's just painted in broader colors. You don't have that intimacy of a smaller house. So I, I feel you have to rely on technique 
a lot more. The thing about acting too is that um, for me is like I, it's like the most vulnerable state that I've ever experienced, and that is exciting and challenging, and it and it just that what's, that's the, that's what gives me the energy is kind of that that sort of like um, f excited anxiety about being so vulnerable like that, and that's what really drives me. And when it comes to directing, because it's a large space, you have to be mindful of distance. Um, and uh, yeah. 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 Sometimes the depth is nice, the distance is nice, because you can um, make bigger, bigger, bolder choices, and it will read as normal choices, and that's kind of fun. And sometimes the distance and the depth is harder because at, like as an actor you have to make those big bold choices instead of going into your comfort of mm -hmm. um, you know ha facial expressions and acting from a place that's more intimate. When the park was you know it's not what it is today it was a dangerous place at night uh, as a matter of actual fact there wasn't any big housing boom nobody's house sold for a million dollars none of that was happening mm -hmm. then. The revitalization was just starting Friends of the park, of Schiller Park, were kind of instant allies. And the people that, um, you know, the, the people that now, I think, and that's an offshoot of the people who do the gardening work here now. So yeah. they were coming along, uh, the city was cooperating. Everybody thought, you know, this was, this was time to rebuild this park. And it, it, it did, it accompanied the growth of, uh, you know, houses being refurbished and remodeled. And, a whole boom of that here and it's the German village that we now know so and if when you're rehearsing outside and like especially when the swords come out and we start having sword fight practice all of a sudden like people hear it and you see people kind of come over the hill and they start watching and we get to sort of let them know what's going on so it really invites like this more this this camaraderie with the community of look what we made we really want to show you and that's pretty cool when you look out there and you see like five to six hundred people in the audience uh, and they're watching you know what your cast and, and your castmates are doing. Uh, it's it's amazing. Um, I also love looking out there and seeing people who maybe have not been to another show before. Um, but because we offer uh, things to be free or whatever for donations, things like that, that people have access to see uh, shows and really very very good quality shows. Um, that they may never ever see again. The most exciting part for me is when we get, you know, five, six, seven year olds who take a break from playing in the park, take a break from running around with the dog, and will come and sit down. Sometimes they'll just sit down on the stage to watch the rehearsals. They're so captivated by what's happening. And it's those kids who are going to be the ones who grow up to enjoy classic theater. And sometimes I think the rehearsals are maybe more engaging for them because it's a little safer for them to go up without the big crowd. What we've found over the years is that it's, it's real democratic, but more than that, a lot of children get sort of left here for the day. And you know, what we were doing down here was a window into a real, a different. a different world for them. Not that they would necessarily go into arts, but just the finding out that something else existed, I think, would justify the existence of the whole place for 30 years to me. They, they say if you, if you do what you love, you don't work a day in your life. You know? <laughs> so for me, it doesn't ever feel like work. Like I'm never like, oh, I have to go direct a play. <laughs> I have to go play Lady M tonight. <laughs> and I tell Sarah all the time, like everyone needs to quit their whining because when I told I told them the other night, I was like, one day you're going to be 85 and nobody's going to ask you to be Mercutio. <laughs> so I really have the mind that I don't take it for granted. I've been there in my life when the phone isn't ringing and there are no job offers on the table. So when I have the opportunity, I do see it as a real blessing. It is a privilege to be able to do it. So I think that's really energizing. There's this return, this energetic return on it, and you give, you get what you give, I think. And when you really put yourself into something and weigh yourself out on stage, that sort of like satisfactory, I'm gonna call it like afterglow, essentially, you're like, wow, that felt that felt good. And when you, especially when, like once you get an audience, that like, it's, you, there, you're not losing anything by doing it. Um, one of the prime ways that we, as human beings, communicate with each other is through stories. Uh, we see that we, we love movies, we love television shows, and things like that. 
Live theater is one of the only ways that we get to experience that storytelling uh, communally in a way where we can interact with it. And so I, I think it brings us together as a community. It knits us together through shared experience and uh, then we're able to take that with us and we're able to um, know that those bonds are formed solely through the experience of watching this art played out on stage. Creativity is so important and I think that it's taken for granted a lot, especially in school systems and things where people um, people don't think that it's something that's necessary for everyday life and they focus on the things like math and science but math and science also you, you need creativity for those kinds of things too and like how is anything new going to be developed or created without that spark of that spark of artistic sense and creativity um, and especially with theater people need art there's so much crap going on in the world you need something to just give you joy, give you hope. Um, I can't, it would be awful if there were no theater. It would really be deadly. Actors Theater has a broad influence in the artistic community of the city, along with several educational outreach programs in schools and summer acting camps. To learn more, visit www.theactorstheater.org. We see from the diverse theater groups in this program that live theater is very much alive and plays an influential role in the heart of our city. As the curtain closes, we open a new chapter of community, heritage, and education shared through the talents, vision, and artistic excellence seen in our Columbus Live Theater groups. You're watching Heart of the City, All the World's a Stage.